Hey everybody, what is up? Happy Monday. Hunter Hikari reporting here, and uh, welcome to Metal Saga Mondays, Episode 3, Redux. Um, the series where I play Metal Saga for the PlayStation 2 on Mondays. Uh, for real though, that's what I've been doing. Um, I just took a look at my progress in the redux of the Let's Play, and I'm like, oh, wow, I'm actually making progress a bit faster than last time. And then I looked at my in-game clock time, and I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> so I just wanted to uh, start off, start things off with just uh, divulging that bit of information that I thought was true. But, it's really not, so... Yeah, what happened, there were four episodes of the original series, and I'm like... Right up to the point of the fourth episode now, I want to say. Uh, episode two of the original series was only half an hour long. And, hold on, I, I think I have it right in front of me. Episode three... Episode three was an hour. So, I don't know. Personally, I don't quite understand the math on that one. <laughs> uh, but about an hour and 50 minutes long game time. So I don't really want to be wasting time. I'm going to go ahead and grab my vehicles. If I remember correctly, I just got finished repairing them. And I'm ready to make moves. Um, to, you know, get on over to the next town. So, exit Newfolk onto the overworld map, and then as I, you know, explained in the last episode, the whole map is tilted a little bit to the right, if, if that makes sense. So, this is west. This is the direction west. Apparently, I have a mail to check out, so check my email. Uh, it's from Alex, the, uh, the man in the black suit who had those two uh, cronies with him in the bar in Newfolk. Be careful if you run into a guy named Alex. Oh, it's from Eddie. Uh, I'm sorry. I read that totally wrong. The subject is Alex. It's from Eddie, the uh, main character's father. Be careful if you run into a guy named Alex. I don't trust him at all. Never let your guard down around him. And I believe it was because of that email that, um, like last time, or my first run of the series, I should say, I had named it, um, Don't Ever Trust the Men in Black, meaning, like, the Men in Black suits, you know, like, uh, the Men in Black from the Aliens movies, nobody remembers, nobody knows what I'm talking about, Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones, Pepperidge Farm remembers. <laughs> I think it's, like, the franchise, the studio, I'm not sure what production or film studio it was, but they wanted so badly to bring Men in Black back um, for a modern generation, and I just don't think Men in Black International, like, took off. I don't know, I personally, I didn't see it, so... This is sick! St stay away! Hurry! Get far away! From this camp! Go! They've got water and food! Look at all this money! Man, I never knew traders were this rich! We probably shouldn't have killed the women too! I feel bad now! But not too bad! <laughs> It's the League of Uncivilized Barbarians! Run! Uh, so this is a key event, um... I feel a little unprepared for this, I forgot this was going on here, I wanted to see what I could buy. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run away and come back to it. 
because I basically just got destroyed fighting Bugsy at the end of the last episode. <clears throat> and lost half of my reward money to repairs. So, yeah, I'm gonna kind of, you know, go this way. O over here? And I see right now already one of my tanks um, is very close to needing casket repairs. I may as well... Uh, at least it's in my best interest to make it to the next town to, like... Uh, make those repairs as quick as possible. So if I run into any more encounters, I'm probably just going to flee. Alright, there's one. Oh yeah, definitely wanna... get away from those three airborne enemies, because I, um... I don't have the best hit rate against airborne type enemies right now. So I'm just gonna kinda scoot on over here and poke my head into the town that is known as East Zero. Now, there are a few things to be done here, and of course, like any time when the player is visiting a new town in this game, there's um, plenty to be explored and plenty of free stuff. I think the coolest free thing is here in this town you can recruit your uh, soldier class character. Now, you might notice that I'm not repairing... <clears throat> i clear my throat, excuse me. You might notice that I'm not repairing my vehicles right away. That's because I want to um, price some parts and decide if I want to uh, buy a better engine, which will ultimately I'll just have to add armor tiles via repairs after anyway. So I mentioned recruiting a soldier class character, and you get a choice of two. Oh, perhaps I'm getting ahead of myself. I am. Uh, there is a swordsman here who knows one of the soldier class characters. Um, yeah, as I mentioned last episode, I haven't been playing the game near as much as I would like to. So yeah, uh... There's the town of East Zero, and then Alice One to the west. And Alice 1 is actually where you're able to recruit a soldier class character. So, I guess with that in mind, what I'll do is, um, I'm gonna hop around town and, you know, get free stuff. Since I can't get a free character. Which is just... Bull crap. Okay, bug spray obtained. That keeps away mosquitoes, which you were often um, harassed by in the middle of the night whenever you stay at an inn. There's one town I've noticed. The anti-tank fortress, I think it is. Um, no. Maybe it's Hell's Keep. But it's one of the last towns in the game, and they have bug nets everywhere. I, I don't think I've seen a mosquito there. So, I'll definitely have to point that out when I get to that point in the game. Okay, big metal obtained. And I believe I saw that I got a free small tile pack in that house as well. Which is definitely better than having to purchase one. Now, I can't go into any houses unless I can visibly see the door, and the door is not blocked. So, because of the fact that this is, you know, legit the second town past the starting point in the game, meaning it's the third town total in the game, there really aren't, um, as many things 
as say like in LS1, the next town, it's just, um, each town you get to is a little less poor than the last town. And these traders, uh, they're neat to talk to, but basically all they do is kind of use you for, um, I think a delivery driver or another trader, which the character is not. If you want to view that dialogue, it is in, um, one of the previous episodes of my Let's Play. I think it's in episode three or four. I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly which one. It's not super exciting stuff, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that. If it were, like, really relevant or whatever, then I'd go ahead and feature that. Scrap armor, do I have... Hmm. Okay, I do not have stick-on armor or, um... Armor? Armor? I don't know. But in addition to, like, clothing armor, you have, like, exterior armor in this game that can get destroyed by enemies, and there's a whole trade thing to be done with that. So, I guess I'll go ahead and get intel on the next bounty, and we will check the weekly target and see if that has changed at all. If I remember correctly, it was last a dud S, which it still is. And here I can get info on the Hammer Hydra, a six-eyed, hammer-headed desert shark. A sand shark that inhabits the desert east of East Zero. East of East Zero! It needs like a song. We're gonna make a song. Like, the, I, I gotta get the Metal Max and the Metal Saga community together and we're gonna make a song about East of East Zero. I can dream. Uh, its large dorsal fin can easily be seen above the sand when it is on the move. <clears throat> So that is one of the um, bounties in the game that actually has an overworld sprite, and um, that is just another enemy that right now I'm of the opinion, you know, it can totally kick my ass. So, gotta check parts available, but I, you know, like I mentioned in last episode, I don't want to spend too much money because I'm just going to get to another town very soon. Tank parts. Hey there, we specialize in vehicle parts. Would you like to see our merchandise? I absolutely would. Okay, the bull engine and the Wozniak C unit. Oh right, yes, I'm remembering now. I already purchased parts in this town. So all I really needed to do was get my free stuff, and um... I gotta make repairs, make a little bit of money, and then take the train to the next town. It sounds simple. <clears throat> it sounds simple enough, it certainly does. But of course, I could have setbacks, like, uh, my vehicle's getting really damaged or needing more repairs. Thankfully, as long as no parts are actually broken, armor tiles can be really cheap. But, I could have sworn... Oh, Tom Cruise's health is is what's low. Maybe the SP on these nuts was low as well. Um, I'm really confused. Kind of like a newborn deer right now. I, I have little to no understanding of the things that are transpiring around me. I'm paralyzed by, by the fear of what I do not know.
push it. Oh. Oh, the cat. Mm -hmm. Cat's with me. I just heard some sort of noise. It was really weird. I know, like, earlier my neighbor was doing a bunch of yard work. I, I figured they'd be done by now. Because that was three hours ago. Oh, I see. I have a part that actually does need repairs, and that's why the vehicle is smoking. It's not broken, but the main gun and the sub gun on these nuts are um, near broken. So they, they need repairs. Uh, I'm of the opinion that ultimately it's cheaper for me at this point to just do it at the repair shop where I just was. But doing that entails basically the same game plan that I just reweighed, you know, just grind to get that money, and then I'll use that money for both repairs and uh, to take the train to the next town. So, partly my... <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't know why... Like, I, I cleared out and everything before I started recording, it's just, I'm, I'm speaking and then it just happens. Um, <clears throat> but it's partly my fault, I, I got a little ahead of myself, and I was like, oh, East Zero is where dot 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 happens, and I was totally wrong, uh, I wasted a little bit of time there, not, not a whole terrible lot of time. But, you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to get a bounty this episode. I'm just going to have to focus on progressing to the next area in the game. That would be ideal to me. Clearly, it's... <laughs> Clearly, it's it's the dew clogging me up. It's that good old Mountain Dew, which I, I always have with me, because I don't know what else it could be. I, I am joking. Almost everything I say is a joke. <clears throat> I'm like Larry Bundy Jr. Like, I just, um, even when I'm talking to my wife, I'm just constantly... She gives me the look, and then I, I just quote Larry Bundy Jr. off YouTube. I'm just, I'll get me covered. <laughs> and she just it was last week I think um, I was watching one of his videos in her presence which I had done before but I guess um, she forgot and she, she just she heard it in the video and her eyes sort of snapped towards looking at me and she's like is that where you got that from absolutely Larry Bundy Jr Mr. Fact find himself. So, alright, 2875 is not bad. I'm actually really far along on my quest to get the monies and do the things. I'm thinking, I don't know, about 5,000 G total, so that way what I'll have I'll have the 25 G, 25,000, not thousand, words, what are they? Uh, 2,500 G to take the train, and that'll leave me uh, a pretty chunk of change for both parts repairs and parts upgrades. Which, my estimation of parts upgrades includes both replacing parts with better parts, and then modding them to be yet better parts. And I'm seeing my vehicles are actually starting to take some damage out here. So even though I'm, I'm holding L2 to do that fast forward trick through battles, uh, really, it just it makes no sound indication of when your vehicles take damage when you hold that L2 button. So uh, the player, it is the player's responsibility to keep an eye on those little numbers besides the HP bars for the characters. 
And not only am I getting a decent amount of gold out here, I'm getting a decent amount of XP. And that's definitely one thing I want. Well, hold on, I have to check on this kitty. Alright, I'm I'm back. Nothing more than a hairball, but it never hurts to check on the kitty cats. They are our little furry friends, and it is our responsibility to see after them the way it is my responsibility as the player to see after my tanks and or vehicles in the saga of metal. All right, I see I'm at uh, 3,565 gold. So I'm close to my mark. I've gotten items to sell to the barkeep in like literally any bar in the game. It doesn't have to be at either East Zero or New Folk. There is one exception to that rule, the any bar in the game rule. Uh, but it revealing that exception contains uh, large spoilers, so I'm just gonna like reel back and say, um, Unless other events in the game have occurred, you can use <clears throat> the services of the bartenders in every bar in the game freely to sell them materials. Okay, up to 3,965, and because of the, the damage my vehicles have taken on, I'm finally thinking about just calling it, because I do have to get those repairs done. I'll do one more battle, but I am assuming that with the, the items I have to sell to the barkeep, I'll have at least... Mm, 4,500 total, oh, definitely, uh, before doing repairs. <clears throat> so I know a large portion of this episode is me just running the numbers, but, um, you know, it just goes to show how important it is to keep track of all of your numbers in this game, your armor tiles or your SP on your tanks, your health points or your HP on your, uh, you know, your individual units, and then you know, the actual money you have in-game, your, your currency. So perhaps I'm stressing the point, but it's just, it's that true that you really do need to be keeping an eye on all of your things in this dangerous uh, post-apocalyptic world. Alright, so I came very close to my goal. <clears> hmm. <throat> And I'm definitely not going to complain about that. Hop in my vehicles. I can make repairs in the next town. Now, there are a couple of events that occur on the train here. But really, I'm just going to focus on making it to the next town, recruiting a soldier class character, uh, finding free items in the town, and repairing and upgrading my vehicles. Everything else, you know, in terms of progress in the game and whatever, that's going to come second because I put all this prioritization on making it this far. Alright, so it is 2,500 gold, or 2,500 G, 
to be riding <clears throat> third class on the train. That just means I'll be on a lower floor. It doesn't really change anything. You can explore the entire train freely. And there are three floors. It's a triple-decker train. It's a very interesting concept, I have to admit. And I also... It sort of raises some concerns, if you ask me, about tipping the train. <clears throat> okay, now I just want to end the train ride, and so I'm just going to ask, are we there yet? And with that, the uh, attendant says that they'll be arriving in Alice 1 shortly. And then the intercom makes an announcement accordingly. And because of, I guess, coding, like, my vehicle, or my characters were identified to be in their vehicles at the time in which I boarded the train, so when I get off the train, my characters auto-navigate back into the vehicles. I didn't actually press any buttons. Interesting side note, the glitch that was making, uh, <clears throat> the wheels on my buggy green have, uh, disappeared since I rode the train. It makes no sense. But... that's what happened. Okay, so now, uh... As I was trying to say earlier in the episode, I'm sorry, these towns are actually nearly identical in layout with a few minor differences. Uh, now that I have arrived in Alice 1, we are treated to a discussion between a woman and a man, and they are discussing <clears throat> the prospect of which weapon is better in a fight, a sword or a gun. The man is backing up the point of the sword, saying that a gun is useless if you can't aim it properly. Uh, the woman takes offense, and the player is given the opportunity to join the conversation themselves here. We also see that Alex is uh, chilling at the bar here, so let's talk to him. Good to see you. It's been a while. How do you like the West? Unlike the East, there are still many areas that have yet to be explored. In fact, it's quite possible that technology from before the Great Destruction is just waiting to be found. Speaking of which, have you met Leon? He's a scientist who's researching the Great Destruction. He lives here in Alice 1. I recommend you talk to him. Now, I must be on my way. I wish you the best. And just like that, he leaves out. So I'm actually going to recruit Charlene. Hey, you! Which do you, th which do you think is a better weapon? A gun or a sword? A gun, for sure. Yep, that's right. Great minds think alike. You're a hunter, ain't you? Looking for a partner? Absolutely. And basically, you can do the same thing with Rashid. Just say that you prefer the sword to the gun, and then he'll offer his services to join you. I believe you can trade if you find that you're not enjoying uh, the use of one character, but I also, I think you can only do that once. And, uh, I'm actually just going to name her Charlie. I think it rolls off the tongue a little better than Charlene. And it's practically the same name, it's just a nickname. My name's Charlie. I specialize in guns. Let's rock! And rock we shall, even if I don't do very much of that this episode. You better bet your buttons 
that we will as this series continues. So there is a brand new hunter's office here, even though the layout of the town looks, um, you know, almost identical to the last town. There are some new things going on here, such as Cowboy Wayne. You're a hunter, kid? Same here. Name's Wayne. You know who Derringer Jack is, kid? Well, if you're thinking of going after him, don't. I'm the one who's gonna kill him, and ain't no one gonna get in my way. Uh, he speaks with conviction. I, I'm gonna just have to go ahead and believe him for now. Tiamat for 200,000 gold, or Tiamat, it may be pronounced. Uh, definitely a little out of my league right now. Uh, a little a lot. Uh, Granddaddy Kong. This is a pretty cool, dude. We'll be getting to that one. Tank Eater for 30,000 G. And that's all we have as far as Outlaws go in Alice 1. The weekly target is still a dud S, and here's what the Hunter Office has to say about Team. A land battleship that cruises the Sea of Sands northwest of Alice 1. It possesses overwhelming firepower and has jet fighters at its disposal. Well, that's just lovely. Granddaddy Kong, a mutant baboon who's the head of the infamous Chimpony family. And Tank Eater, a giant ant lion that lives in the desert southwest of Dillon, known to attack tanks that get caught in its nest. So let me just shuffle to and away from the door here <laughs> until I exit the building intentionally. Um, and yeah, now I'm going to grab my tanks and do some upgrading. Because that's like a huge part of this game. There's also, I have to hunt the town for free stuff, so I can't be forgetting that. Alright, I'm seeing, yeah, like things are kind of out of my price range. Um, I can get a better C unit right off the bat, and I'm actually going to do that and equip it to these nuts. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just as I said, I'll equip the new C unit, and then sell the other one. Unfortunately, the vehicle is overloaded for the time being, um, just until I sell the extra C unit. Whoop. I almost sold the new one, and I definitely would have been regretting that because I would have lost about 900 gold in that, uh, transaction, so no, no, we will not be doing that here today. What? You think I'm hyper? I can get more hyper -er, alright? Like, let me just chug this dew, and then, and then we'll go to a, a theme park and ride rides. Yeah. Yeah. See what is then. Alright, restore armor tiles first and foremost, and I have just enough to do that, so I will not be repairing the parts that are not broken, 
But here's the fun part. Now that I've already been here, I don't need to ride the train to and fro from the town, so I can just use my handy vehicle teleporters. And I'm going to teleport to East Zero and grind for cash. So yeah, today, it seems like today's episode is largely just me running the numbers and then grinding. But it's an RPG, so... Yeah. Okay, um, two emails from the Hunter's father character, and two from Dr. Palm, who was looking for a friend. He says, I am a lonely old man with no one to talk to. I'm good at building tanks. If you'd like to be my friend, please come see me, hoping to be your friend. Dr. Palm. P.S. It would be nice if you were interested in tanks. And Eddie says, When you visit Beldare, be sure to meet with a man named Arthur. He used to look after me back in the day. He made a fortune as a hunter and built his own city. He's a great person to talk to. And he also emails me about Leon and Alice One, whom I very conveniently, conveniently, meaning not conveniently at all, forgot to visit. There's a guy in Alice One named Leon who's studying what the world was like before the Great Destruction, and now it looks like somebody's interested in his research. Be careful you don't get caught up in any trouble, okay? So there comes a friendly warning from the Hunter uh, player character's father. He's saying there's some, you know, shady business going on surrounding Leon's research. Leon himself is a chill dude. Alright, so due to skills, I'm losing about 57 gold per battle, but making approximately 350, give or take, as long as I keep, um... As long as I keep my profits in those numbers and not lower, then I'll be just fine as far as the grind goes. And I believe I mentioned that last episode. So basically, uh, Charlene, or Charlie as I've nicknamed her, has an auto skill equipped when you get her. And it increases her hit rate against airborne enemies. And that skill itself costs gold to activate. All skills do. Uh, whether they're passive, such as um, the uh, up airborne rate, or if they're active, like um, there's like the bulldozer skill, if you have uh, spikes on your tank, there's Uh, the disarm skill, you can disarm enemies that self-destruct. I would count that as active. There's also half run, which does exactly what it sounds like it does. It halves an enemy's run rate, and you can stack that, um... You can stack that buff or passive trait. I think that's simultaneously one of the most ridiculous things and one of the coolest things about both Metal Saga and Metal Max games is that, um, unlike Pokemon where they give you a ceiling for passive abilities, like, uh, that increase stats, there's no ceiling for stacking buffs in Metal Max and Metal Saga. It's... <laughs> so it can actually, enemies that have stat increasing abilities it can make them incredibly difficult sure uh but in that same in that same light the player can abuse those ability stacks to the same degree now um <clears throat> i don't think they're like broken ability buffs to to stack in this particular game but definitely in in the main metal max series of games Like, I guess... Hmm. 
Well, no, see, the, the airborne up skill is an auto skill, so you can't... Not to my knowledge, you can't have the character use it over and over again to have a 100% hit rate against an airborne type enemy. Now, that would be super helpful. So, perhaps I misspoke when I included Metal Saga in that original formula. But it's definitely a thing in, in Metal Max, the, uh... Partner series. Or main series. That is related to Metal Saga. The saga that is metal. And I think I've gotten pretty darn close to exploring a world now, uh, searching this entire area of grass with my, um, I think it's the metal detector that's the smaller one. You get, later in the game, you get a larger detector. No, it must be, I guess the mine detector must be the smaller one. But yeah, basically I'm searching for items. Haven't found a damn thing. So, I'm gonna give up on that search and just focus on the grind for cash. Because, more or less, I would like to start off the next episode uh, with a little bit of money. <clears throat> Ooh. For purchasing parts and upgrades. I just lost Charlie to those overpowered tank enemies, which is the exact reason I was avoiding uh, that northern area there. So now I have to teleport back to Junkyard <clears throat> and have her revived. How, you say? Let me show you. I feel like I was doing a lot better um, during my first Let's Play, even if I was taking more time, I, I feel like I had the progression down pat. Whereas here, I don't have as much free time to play the game as I would like, so I'm not doing quite as well as I was when I was very well versed in the game. So. I'm feeling like I'm gonna have to make that time. I'm gonna have to make that free time and just play Metal Saga like all day on Sundays or something. <laughs> Provided I have that time. But right, I'll figure it out. Like, I haven't done anything that I can't fix, but I'm pretty broke. And I don't have the weapons or equipment that I would need to, um, progress further. So I've sort of stunted my progression in the game. And, uh, yeah, I, I just have to fix that by grinding, unfortunately. Thankfully, reviving players is free, doesn't actually cost you anything, using the inn does, but fun fact, if, if your player gets knocked out, or one of your player characters, I should say, um, when they ha get revived, they will have full HP. But it's definitely a pain in the ass to be reviving your characters because, um, wow, I almost went straight back there. 
Because you have to go all the way back to the first town, even if you teleport. It can just be downright annoying, or at the very least, a chore. So I guess I'm not really going to set a monetary mark for me to try to hit today. Um, that little red blip that you see on the map, I'm going to mark that as my next location to explore. Because I can definitely be checking that out. So, you know, dogs? You like dogs? If you like dogs, stay tuned for next episode. It's gonna be fun. And of course, for those who don't know, those who haven't figured out, those who are still watching, wow, thank you, if, if you're still tuned in. Um, Mondays is the day that I record Metal Saga, and eventually I, I plan to use this day to record Metal Max, so then it will be, of course, Metal Max Mondays. Um, and that means that next Monday will be when I get to the next episode of this series. Uh, these airborne enemies are always making me nervous. Alright, so I had just under 2,000 G and a bunch of items to sell to the barkeep. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to place me at about 2,500. And that's at least enough to buy another C unit, which I'll do before I end off the episode. Okay, and here we are treated to the sighting of the, uh... The Dalton Brothers, they are called. Yes, one of them is clearly not a brother. <laughs> but, um, that's what they call themselves. And they like to hop on the train and, the, and rob the casino, and you gotta, you know... Save the people from them. There is also an event, another bounty that will appear on the train, oftentimes immediately after them. Here's another event, the Blueberries. The Blueberries, they're now in East Zero. And uh, this BB Trooper, Blueberry Trooper says, some people say that we force our services upon the good citizens of the towns we visit. But that is simply not true. We never pressure anyone into purchasing our protective services. Yeah, okay, buddy. I'm, you know, really hard pressed on believing that. Alright, so enter the town of Alice One. And just to sort of ease my curiosity, if you will, I'd like to check something at the hunter's office just before I save. And this guy speaks about his buddy who went missing in the mine. Um, I've never found a person missing in the mine. I've gone into the mine. Alright. 2,706G. So, 200 more than I had uh, roughly estimated I would get for the items. I sold...
So I could actually, if I really wanted to, I could purchase a bull engine, but I'm really just going to focus on the C units for today. Okay, yep. Right to the Raptor. Go ahead and sell the Wozniak. It'll warn me that the tank cannot function without it. That's fine. I will be equipping it before I even attempt to move. And I'm noticing I have literally no armor tiles on my vehicles. It is um, a little bit of a ridiculous situation, but thankfully the next area I will be exploring um, will actually be on foot. So I won't have to worry about vehicle repairs or any of that. Yeah, I have to admit... <clears throat> Not my best day on the job, but at least I was pretty alert about um, the damage being done to my wallet and, and the numbers in general. I'll go ahead and check if the weekly targeted target has changed uh, now that I've actually stepped outside the town of Alice 1. It is still a dud S. Very interesting. Go ahead and save. And with that, I will be done for today. So everybody, thank you so much for watching. Again, I am Hunter Hikari, and this has been Episode 3 of Metal Saga Mondays, featuring Metal Saga for the PlayStation 2. Uh, I hope you all stay safe, stay awesome, and have a great day. Over and out.